Hey guys, this is John here in Los Angeles with the Alpha Channel Update for Thursday, October 17th, 2024. And today, we're going to start with the Hawker Halderson Yggdrasil deck. This is a Norse Pantheon deck. It's not a proper tarot deck. <clears throat> it's just all the characters. And today's is Simara Nightmare. The last two were uh, Muspelheim characters, and she might be as well. Um... This is just really, or maybe Niflheim or Hell. Samara, Nightmare. <clears throat> and it kind of relates to Conan 248 a little bit. In that there's a little bit of uh, magic sort of going on with this one. So Conan is holding Zula's head. Red Sun is in the background. Is this the end of Zula? And the last one, he had been knocked unconscious and they were just about to kill him with a magic sword. Here he wakes up in a uh, arena <clears throat> and demands to know what's going on and finds a sword cuffed to his hand. And the bad guy says, that's so you can't throw it at me. Same bad guy from yesterday, this dude with the uh, ponytails. Where is he? We get some pictures of him in a second. Conan decides he'll just jump up onto the uh, the viewing box and confront them directly without throwing the sword. And the monster swats him down, and here is the guy with the sort of Snoop Doggy Dog ponytails. This bald guy down here at the bottom. He's got this monster squatting on the pavilion above, overhead. <clears throat> Conan asks where his friends are and this is a pretty so this is a new artist this is a kind of an ogre-ish looking Conan he does not really get the character down until the uh, middle of the book um, what is his name so this is Mike Doherty on pencils uh, it's Nell Yamatov on colors there's a couple people on inks Chan and some other name Roy Thomas is still writing and Conan is, so we've had a couple issues uh, in a row where I actually have them. And they've been sort of military history, sort of mercenary army storylines. Kind of like Caesar in Gaul. And uh, although Conan is a main character and not necessarily the, the general in charge of the army. So it's not, you know real military history. We're not talking about like movements in the field and whatnot. Um, Conan, again, being drawn by a new artist, Mike Doherty, and the character, uh, here's Zula, who also looks very different in this panel. Um, they're now going to fight each other. And if they don't fight, they're just going to be killed. And they want to know where Red Sonia is, and he says, here's Red Sonia. If you don't fight, I'll kill her. And she, you know, argues with him. Don't listen, you know, as Red Sonia would do. Conan and Zula decide to attack together, and that's when he reveals that he's got Red Sonia. So Conan and Zula are going to attack together, and he pulls Red Sonia up. And also, I just saw, there's a Bill and Ted's ad right there. And uh, so, yeah, Red Sonia and this guy are arguing, bickering. Conan and, and Zula are going to fight. And this is a, a bit, it's written and illustrated very well. You, com you have complete buy-in as an audience member. You have no choice to, but to believe what's before your eyes. Zula loses it and attacks Conan uh, furiously. And here we get a Conan picture that looks like Conan. This looks like the Pat Redding, Dale Eaglesham, Conan the Barbarian 157, not Conan the Barbarian, Savage sort of Conan 157, where uh, it's a really unique penciling style. Uh, Dale Eaglesham pencils and Roy, uh, Pat Redding inks. I don't remember who wrote it. Um, but it, they have a couple panels that look like this, although it's all in all black and white. So... You don't have the color. If I color a Conan book, that's going to be the one I want to do. 
And here they're fighting in the arena. They're really going at it. Conan uh, s it tries to reason with Zula and he can't. And Zula says, if you don't kill me, I'll kill you. So Conan stabs him and then beheads him. Not only does he behead him, he then throws the head at this guy up here in the stands. And at some point, the wizard and the, uh, the demon left. Doesn't really matter. So Conan throws the head at him. This guy gets mad. He jumps into the pit. I'll beat you with my magic sword. And the wizard is not in the arena anymore. And now Red Sonia is in the parapet with just these two guards who are watching. The guards are like, don't do it, boss. Don't do it. It's dangerous. Conan fights this guy while Red Sonia kills the guards. This guy, of course, gets the uh, edge on Conan because he has a sword that melts other metal when he hits it. it. Melts pretty much anything it hits. It's a magic sword. And Conan... Um, <clears throat> is about to lose when Zula's disin, dis, had, dis, not disembodied corpse, well, I guess. Anyhow, Zula's corpse stands up and scares this guy into dropping the magic sword right when he could kill Conan again, like the third time. And he drops the sword and runs away screaming and crying because Zula's headless corpse has stood up. And then we get to the bottom of this page where Zula is very much alive. And he explains that he used magic. And that Conan also uh, now has the magic sword. And uses it against the demon. And of course we get him to throw it. They, could, they had to put the chain on it in the first bit. And now he gets to throw it at this big wide mouth to demon. This is a Conan comic. This is what it should be. This is, and the demon gets irradiated, zapped into a lightning bolt and disappears. Here's the cover again. This is what a Conan, that, this is a little bit goofy. There's a, there's a lot in this that's goofy. Um, and there's a, it's not over yet. So now they're leaving. They see all their soldiers uh, who'd been chained up in this pen. Apparently they didn't bring their entire army with them because you can't fit an entire army in a small little cage. They steal some horses. They are riding away. Zula throws the skull that he was going to keep as a souvenir. Um, and then they meet, then they go to a bar and are getting drunk because they had a hell of a day. And the bosses show up. This is where it becomes... Oh, so first Red Sonya tells Conan, I ain't sleeping with you. Conan says, this other girl, well, who are you then? She goes, you really want to know? He goes, yeah, of course I do. Later, maybe not so much, but right now I'm interested. And Sonya's pissed and whatever. Um, and then this guy shows up. And this guy is the king of the city-state. He has some big, long name, Thessalides or something like that. And he is with... Am Amal Rick, who is right here, and they say, from now on, soldiers can't get drunk after midnight. It's well past after midnight. You guys, this is last call. Get out. Sober up for tomorrow. We face the, the enemies. Conan sends Zula and Sonya back to the barracks. He's going to go wander about. He's not tired yet. And as he goes wandering about, he finds a girl. Because these are the three tropes in every Conan book. One he throws a sword. Two, he's taken prisoner. Three, he seduces a girl. And here, three, uh, she takes him back to her place where it's revealed that she's not just any girl. She's the princess and that she wants to make Conan the commander. So that's a double, triple uh, trope, triple Conan trope, is that a princess wants to make him king. And he says, no, I have to do it on my own. He hasn't said no yet, but she just asked him, so. Here we get the Hulk with sunglasses. I think this is right before Dale Keown did him, or right after. Uh, I believe this is 91, so this would be right after Dale Keown did the Hulk. That might be a Dale Keown Hulk. Is it? Probably not. You guys know better than I do. 
And yeah, Conan 248. Um, this is a basic Conan story. It doesn't reach very high in terms of military history or military maneuvers. It doesn't reach very high in terms of being clever. Zula has this mesmerism uh, voodoo technique that he learned from the guy who he ends up killing. I didn't point that out. He does kill the wizard uh, right here. So this is very much Zula is deus ex machina. Red Sonia is just a girl in a steel bikini. And it's a basic, basic comic. They don't color outside the lines. They don't need to. It's perfectly fine. It doesn't try to be more than it needs to be. And it's certainly not boring. Um, I, you know, I think by 248, Roy Thomas deserves a phone in issue or a few of them or a bunch of them. Um, it's got to be hard to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. But if you would put a month between all of these, this is, you know, this is a perfectly acceptable Conan the Barbarian comic book. Uh, now, for my part, I reached a little higher. I aimed a little higher than Conan. Conan is the foundation of my at least comic book literature. Uh, I guess you would say everything that I've read. If you take in all the novels I've read, a lot of them uh, relate and are parallel. Um, Conan does have a higher level of reality than say superheroes. Um, he's certainly not as powerful as they are. Um, this one, they break the, the, the rules a little bit and that they use magic. He uses a magic sword and he comments on it. The magic sword disappears with the demon when he throws it at him. So they, uh, they're using the blocks that they have. They're using the tools. They're painting with the colors that they have. And in so far as that, it's a very good comic book. I do the same thing. Science fiction uh, was, so instead of the past and using magic, I use the future in science fiction. We they have floating cars and floating roads and a floating city. And in this one, uh, this is a girl, a ballerina, who has, you know, done as much physical training as any martial artist uh, in dance and in martial arts. And it's natural that she adopted a martial arts style that benefits her and that gets explored in the second comic. It's very much a waifu um, in that you don't have to outlift what can't hit you. You know, she can dodge where other characters have to sort of live through being, you know, Stallone in Rocky needs to get beat up. Whereas a girl, you don't, you don't want to see them beat up. The, the restaurant fight scene with uh, Hannah, I think her name is, no, Anna, Anna, the Luc Besant one, not the series and the movie, the Luc Besant movie with Sasha Luss, where she is in the restaurant, there's a guy who slams her with a fire extinguisher, and that would knock her out, you know? Most of that fight, though, she's able to dodge. And for, you know, uh, if it's believable, that's fine. That's all a story needs to be. That's all this story needs to be, so... You know, um, it's got maybe too many moving parts in that they're doing this whole military campaign and the wizards and, and demons. It's all in one. Um, I don't think that's necessary. I think you can separate the two. Sort of the way they did the Iliad and the Odyssey, you know. The Odyssey would be a Conan road sort of uh, murder hobo, as I heard someone describe him, story. Whereas the Iliad would be the Achilles um, sort of commander, uh, military commander general story that they can, you should separate those two. Uh, Caesar, the way Caesar in Gaul and I don't know, other military, Solomon Cain being a military adventurer, a veteran out fighting demons after his time with the, with the army. Those, those stories work. Those stories work for a lot of reasons. And uh, this kind of, a little bit what this is. So Ashley, this in this one, the ninja babysitter gets promoted to Valkyrie. Um, so instead of being just a wandering murder hobo or a veteran soldier uh, who then becomes a supernatural vampire hunter, uh, she levels up.
And she, yeah, kind of supernatural vampire hunter with wings. That's what angels kind of are. So yeah, uh, Samara, nightmare. Without nightmares, what do you have? Life would be so boring. All right, see you guys tomorrow.